We are live indeed. Great. And is the music okay? I don't know if it's too loud or if you can even hear it. Oh yeah, we're a bit behind too. I forgot about that. Yeah, everything good. Great. Well, welcome everyone to a very interesting live stream, we hope. This is my sister, Frida. Hello. For anyone who haven't seen her, she's the one behind all the thumbnails and basically just my... It's, it's mini me, as you can see. It's me, but smaller and without glasses. She makes all my thumbnails, just helps out on the channel in general, makes the banners. What else do you do? Oh, hello. <laughs> what else do you do, Frida? I am a, currently I'm a freelance artist. I make, um, I make art for anime conventions. I do YouTube thumbnails for this one and also other people. <laughs> um yeah no uh i'm between schools right now so i'm doing a lot of freelance work for other people conventions uh this small businesses and stuff like that yeah. yeah and this is by the way frida's room it's why you have all the uh posters and gaming equipment i play games too but i don't at all have the space for all of these things but you're probably wondering where charlie is i have her in the back my beautiful Bertrix back and she's been a bit sleepy which is why i let her be in there but do you want to come out and say hello charlie are you okay cuddly little charlie do you want to come out you want to come out and chill or sit in the back chill and chill <laughs> We can take Charlie out and chill. We have some help here just making sure that everything the is little going blue okay. head, yes. Sticking up from the backpack. You can sit up there. People can still see you. And you're probably gonna poop a lot on the floor. Yeah, it's your Char floor. Charlie's been out here a lot, by the way. So she's thoroughly been enjoying like chewing my walls. Oh yeah, the wood panels on the walls. The wood Charlie's panels. been chewing those. It's like a giant toy. Yeah, on the wall. and all the gamer chairs, she will sit on the top of them and poop on the floor. And I will sometimes forget to uh, clean up after her. <laughs> what? No, I, I can <laughs> But we have almonds for Charlie here. How old is Charlie? Charlie is three or so? About three, yeah. So she was, I think she has her hatch day in May. And then I got her during s September, at the start of September three years ago yeah i think that adds up so she's in her very bad hormonal state right now where she screams she chews falls in love with your boyfriend falls in love with my boyfriend she loves michael <laughs> and will do honey honks with him all day why does that sound like this horny honks yeah she's a beast oh yeah and for those that are interested and maybe saw uh frida here is Frida is actually here uh, because she's nice to talk to, but also because she will draw uh, something that one of you send in. It could be you, it could be a pet or both of you. All you have to do right now, the reason we did the people joining the first 10 or 15 minutes is so that Frida actually has time to do it during the stream. She will do a drawing and then send it to the person that wins <laughs> at the end of the stream. So if you wanna, enter we're just gonna spin the wheel uh whenever people have send in pictures or emails is send an email to stello and charlie at gmail.com i think it's in the description should be you can copy the email send me maybe a name of what, what your name is or the name of your pet and then uh the picture that you would like frida to draw and frida will draw it for the duration of the stream for the low cost of free. For the low cost of free. <laughs> so, what's it say? Hi, I'm new to the New Jersey. I just got my baby Pyronus over the weekend. He's coming home in about a month. He's still in two feeding. He's still in two feedings a day. I have waited for this baby boy for over four years. Oh, that's so cute. I know that people in the US wait oh, yeah, so their, long. Their waiting times are crazy. I have heard people being on waiting lists 
for five years and if you've been for four i can only imagine the excitement of getting one we're uh we're lucky enough to be getting a kitten a, a kitten soon and we've been waiting for like i think a month at minimum like a month or two not even yeah no not even a month uh and i i can't contain myself so like i can't <laughs> imagine waiting four years and being on a waiting list but was it a little blue head oh it just says pinus what kind of pinus is it i'm curious now have to remember that we're a bit behind so <laughs> yeah we have about a five second delay yeah we're lucky in europe definitely i waited i think i called a guy in denmark there are two pinus breeders in denmark one lived 10 minutes away from me and the other lived three hours away so that was pretty lucky called him he had three pionis no one was on waiting list except for one on a bronze wing and he had two blue heads. So I just called him. I could come pick her up, I think, three months after, two months after. And also with pricing, I didn't pay nearly as much as I, again, hear that you guys pay in the US for Charlie. It's crazy. I mean, we're also really lucky because we live in a, in a part of the country where there's a lot of breeders, from what I know, at least cats and dogs, because there's a lot more farms out here. Yeah. Is that not, like, kind of... If you ever go to visit Denmark, make sure to visit, like the big Ulandville <laughs> it's called instead of the Copenhagen part because we call that the devil island that's where the people from Copenhagen are you don't need to visit those places visit visit the other parts of Denmark that's where you get the real that's the, that's Danish the quiet experience places. that's where all the farms are this is kind of the countryside but not really yeah people are chill blue hat pinus yay over 5k oh my god what are those noises She's oh, she's doing honey honks. Oh. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can see her shaking her wings. That's Charlie it's being... Not... I don't know if it's you guys. Could be. Could My sister's be. boyfriend is here. It could be that she's just very into male. Hi. <laughs> he's just making sure that everything is like all right because we're streaming off of his computer because like that's my computer in the background so we're streaming off of his computer so we that's why we have all this pro set up i also know that if one of you subscribes there will come a little pop-up message and all of that go subscribe <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to we have oh, a no, few they, friends they have and to. one dude now has I'm here. <laughs> she's too modest now i'm here and i can be like you have to subscribe <laughs> She makes really good content. There's one in France that has all, even the what? Vaginali? I haven't heard that. I need to just look that up. So it could I be a, it could owl. it could be a lat no no it's it's pinus, I think. Did it not say I owl? think it's just Oh no it didn't. That is not it's too small if there's gotta be a signal. I think that it's like I don't assume it's this one. What if I write pinus? Oh, it's oh, it's that blue head pinus where they have like the blue belly. Oh. Yeah, I actually love those. I think they're super cool. It looks like a tropical Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Charlie, it's you, but blue, more blue. Not only your head. But look, we have this wheel of names ready to go, and I think at. 2015 that's that's 8 15 p.m we're gonna do the thingy the thingy <laughs> yeah yeah so make sure you send in an email to uh stello and charlie stello and charlie like at gmail.com uh and just include a picture of what you want stello. to draw. and then we'll pick out some of the people who send in their uh their, their stuff yeah and trust me, there aren't a lot of people watching, so your chances are big. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Seen someone say you could find them for six. It's so crazy. It's really. I mean, I think I've heard the bronze wings go for more bronze wings and sometimes duskies than blue heads and white caps and um, maxis. So bronze wings. And duskies definitely. Oh, maybe it is not them. Do you want pets, Charlie? Yeah, she's flipping up. You can do it. <laughs> Charlie is so sweet with other people. She hasn't really. I'm getting pets. 
she doesn't really know Frida and her boyfriend that well, but she still allows them to scritch her and do whatever. <laughs> I think she's asking for it. She's fluffing up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> what a cutie. <laughs> I live in South America and sometimes I see them fly by my house. Ah, oh, I wish I could Ooh. see them in nature. That could be so cool. In the wild. It's a bit... I, I feel like it could be a bit sad though, seeing them in nature flying around, being all natural and then thinking about us having them in captivity. Okay. Though I think if I let Shelly out in the wild, she would survive she for would. like... You'd be like, where's my football? Yo, where's my tree? She's a foil, definitely. <laughs> she'll be sitting on a like a branch and she'll be like, so when, when's the food coming up, guys? Like, when, I have to do what? <laughs> no, I don't think she would be. I think she would just let any male jump on her. <laughs> really. You're telling me bell peppers don't <laughs> grow here naturally? <laughs> Before COVID, I know there were about 2K in US, definitely gone up since. Yeah. Oh yeah. Breeding went up. Though I like, could imagine they could take even more for them during COVID. But oh yeah. There was a, we, we had like an epidemic. Oh. Did you just say we had an epidemic like no one else did? <laughs> no, 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 no. During no. Denmark, we had an epidemic. I don't no, know no, if you no. heard about during it. During the pandemic, there was like an epidemic of like people buying uh, like pets, even though they couldn't take care of them because they were like, oh, I have a bunch of time now so I can get a dog. And then they went and get a dog, got like got a dog. And then once the pandemic was over, it was like, oh, I don't have time for this dog that I've adopted. Yeah. And then there was just ton of people like trying to sell their dogs it was super sad i also look into pinus because of course i just look at pinus on the danish craigslist and people were like i have to sell my pinus because i'm going to work now <laughs> like yeah you weren't expecting were to you that? expecting to just have the the rest of your life you were going to be home i think we're, people need to think about whenever they get pets like i'm gonna have charlie for 40 years so even if I would have time while I study, I have to think about, well, what, what about when I'm a vet? Do I then have the time? Do I have the time when I'm old? Do I have the time whenever? Whenever. <laughs> She's just shaking, being horny. <laughs> you can also hear it. You can hear it? Does yeah. she do the honks? She, do, she does the honks. She loves it. I'm so scared to get pooped on right now. Yeah. <laughs> She's just shaking her booty should, at should me. I shake <laughs> now? Yeah, I don't, I my, don't. my job is fulfilled. It's your job is fulfilled, <laughs> yeah. and now you're just making her horny. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. Is it? Go away! You're making my bird horny. Yeah. Go yeah, away! You're too handsome. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Okay. Bye. Your man is leaving, Charlie. You have to stay here. Bye, bye Charlie. Bye, bye. Here's <laughs> your support man. Oh. When Michael isn't here. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, Charlie. Bye -bye, guys. Char Char Charlie's getting side tricks. Yeah, reference of Charlie choking. <laughs> Charlie, you should do an OnlyFans. Do I want to? I can, I can give it away. You, you don't give these things away for free, okay? Censor we can't even show your feet, no. Yeah, no, censor them. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes when me and my parents ride on the highway, we see stands with blue-headed pinus crammed off in cages. Aww, oh. that's so sad. Yeah. I can't believe people oh. still do that. Yeah, and even in Denmark, who like I I'd say we're pretty like okay far ahead in terms of like not keeping animals in captivity. Like there are no circuses that have animals in captivity anymore. But like we have this festival. Um, I can't say the city, of course, but like we have this festival very near our city, like every year. And and there's this like animal. It has like an animal market mm. near it, and and those are horrible. I don't get why people can do that. And even with pies, as rare as they are, how can you have them like that? Yeah, it's a beautiful creature. Do people actually, for the people living in the US, I don't think you can have dogs and cats in stores anymore, can you? You can't here, and I think you can't a lot of places. Mm. But I don't know if you can some places. Thank you for the harness training with me. I got the same one as you, and we'll share it now. Oh. oh, that's so great. I'm glad you liked it. Pies aren't really too like like they don't like to be touched a lot and so i made that video because i thought there might be some other ones in the same position as me where they just have a bird that doesn't like to be ch touched <laughs> depends on the state yeah maybe Char charlie i could is, imagine uh, that Char charlie likes to you know um, what's it called 
Play hard to get. Play hard to get. Yeah. That's it. She plays hard. To get. English. English. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I can imagine it depending on the state. Definitely. I think it's wild that you can do that. Even with birds. I remember at these markets that you talked about, I often hear people that go by say that they're gonna buy a bird just to let it free. And while the, the thought is sweet, you shouldn't do that because the bird can't survive in nature. It's just gonna die. Especially parrots that are from, you know, bred in a country where they're not originated from. If you just let them out, they're just very colorful birds, easy to spot and catch for a predator. And they don't know what's going on, so they're not gonna hide or anything. Like so in a country like Denmark, there's nothing here. Nothing for her to hide in. Yeah, <laughs> don't do that. Also, isn't it too cold here? Like, she wouldn't survive. Most birds can actually survive pretty well in the cold, as well as as long as they just get uh, enough food. So the problem would, would probably be food, because as long as they can eat, they can produce their own body heat. So that's why you'll see very small birds needing to eat a lot, because they need to contain their body heat. Okay. So it's not so much that it can be too cold for them. There is, of course, a threshold. Don't put them out in minus 10 degrees Celsius, but, you know, they can survive in pretty low temperatures. Well, I'm gonna check my email now. I think it's time. It is time. So, last chance for anyone who wants to send in their email for Frida to draw. I will just say it again if new people have joined. I am doing a drawing for any of you guys. Uh, if you send in your uh, like a picture of you or a pet or anything you would like drawn, uh, of course nothing weird, um, to Stella's email, uh, we will put them on a wheel and uh, I will draw it for you. I of course can't draw anything like too detailed because like we don't have a ton of time. But she will draw what she can, and yeah. maybe, she can draw a lot. Maybe we should give people just a sec. You can uh, maybe show some of what I do, just so people have yeah, like, of course. a frame of reference. <laughs> What's best, Instagram or TikTok? Or uh, Instagram. Probably Instagram, I think. Shit, I had to log in. Do you have an Instagram? <laughs> See, I have that one Instagram with me and Shelly, with like one picture. I actually wanted to post more on the Instagram so that people could follow along in what we do. Shoot. Let me stop it. <laughs> what do I do? Should I log in? Yeah, no, you can log in and then... I, I, wait, I actually think... I don't think you need to log in if you just search up my, like, my name on, on Instagram. I don't. Like if you if you did uh, if I do Frida, no. Instagram, yeah, some, something like that. I think you don't. Yeah, there. I don't actually think you need to log in. Oh, oh ah, yes. there you go. <laughs> yeah, so this is the type of stuff I do. I do a lot of girls. I can draw dudes too. I just don't do a lot. <laughs> but here you can see some of Frida's art style. Oh, sure Super not. cute. Stuff. Here's the one she did of me and Charlie. Okay, I can't see it in full format apparently. You might recognize it. What do people say? Fellow population in Helios and Spain being far time. Orange going on team hybrid. Oh. Would you ever get another bird? I have three others two cockatiels and a conure. I. I do have a little surprise coming in August. I'm not gonna say too much about it, but there will be a video on that. So you can keep an eye out for that if you want to. But it does maybe involve another bird. I shouldn't say more. So it maybe involves another bird and I'm gonna do that. But I would like to get a companion for Charlie. Maybe not right now as a my space is very limited we don't have a very big apartment and i would also be a bit worried with the finances having to have like you food know and food and toys for both i would need a um, emergency vet um emergency vet money for both all of that i couldn't do that i don't i don't think it would be responsible to get another bird uh, however when i become a vet we get something bigger Charlie's is Definitely gonna get a friend. I think I can say um, I would definitely do that. But how does a pinus get along with two cockatiels and a conure? I would actually like to know because I know When a lot of people mix species 
and especially with ties that ties can be very strict and very harsh towards other birds so i can imagine it being hard with other species but i don't know oh i think we're just gonna get drawing so that we can at least we can start with one person and if i finish fairly quickly we can maybe do it yeah definitely I think we have one person that sent in their bird. So it's a very quick one. Is there another one? No, or no, or... this is uh, an old one. Oh, okay. So it's this one. But I guess that means we have someone's bird to draw and the winner. <laughs> so you're going to draw a cockatiel, it looks like. And it is from Shakira. Whom I actually well, think way. was maybe in my cage review video as well. Technician is back. Technician is back. Yeah. Can I borrow this mouse? Yeah. Thanks, Technician maybe saw the live stream and saw something was wrong. <laughs> he was like, what is Maybe. This? Maybe. Fine enough. Are we not talking loud enough? <laughs> we are gonna talk louder. I love how we're like, we're gonna talk louder as we say that, but speaking like lower. I can. We just have a technician doing everything for us. It's great. I love having a boyfriend working in tech. <laughs> Shout out to my boyfriend, who's the one who built my computer. <laughs> I think this should be better. Just All right. Speak Thank louder. you. Speaking louder. Speaking louder. Yes, sir. I also don't know what happened to the light. We're very blue all of a sudden. You're going to draw a cockatiel. A cockatiel. So, Shakira. You have sent in three pictures. Oh, no, 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 no. Do you just want her to make like you and your cute little bird? Flint, yeah, I think you are from my cage review. I remember tiny Flint. Aww. Okay, you say you just have some options to choose from. So Frida, I, I think mean, you'll be the one to decide. I don't know if you want to- I like that one. <laughs> you want to draw this one? I want to draw the one where she's in it. Okay. I can just show people the picture. Just need to download it okay. so that I don't show anything. Accidentally leaked your social Whoa. security number. I don't think I will. There we go. So Frida's gonna attempt to draw this. Look at how cute Flynn is. Okay. Such a cutie little guy. Oh. <laughs> Cockatiels are awesome. Well, that means I will go into concentration mode, and you are probably... And I <laughs> will do the talking. <laughs> I was wondering if I should have asked questions beforehand so that I could have questions to return to. But if, if you guys have anything that you want to ask, I guess now's the time. Oh, I can just I pet before? Charlie for an hour. That also works for me. Hello, Joey. Hello. But I guess I could just spill the beans on what my plans are regarding August so that we can discuss some things. So. <laughs> I should have made this a. I should have made a much better thumbnail for this. I should have been like revealing big plans. <laughs> So what's going to happen in August is that Charlie is going to have a friend for the whole month uh, being a bronze winged pianist, um, which I'm very excited for. Charlie did meet up with her uh, once before and they were very interested in each other. But because it was at the bronze wings place, um, it did get a bit territorial whenever Charlie landed on the cage. So what we're going to try is to do it at a neutral space, uh, being here at my parents, where I will take care of both of them for a month. And if it works out, if they become best friends, I'm not expecting them to preen during the first week because that's not realistic. But if I can get them to just get along semi well and 
see that they're interested in each other's body language and all of that, I could consider taking it on um, and, and having a second bird. But again, the challenge is the space. So that's why I need them to get along pretty well or just know that any fights aren't gonna break out all of a sudden or their bond could break because then I would have a hard time getting um, bigger separate cages or doing something when we have as little space as we have but I really want to give Charlie some more space especially with the hormones having gotten pretty bad I really want Charlie to have a friend that you know she can see herself in play with preen with so that I don't have to do it all day even though you're pretty sweet so that's my plans for August I'm of course gonna document the whole thing so that you guys can see what we get up to and how it's going and if this bird could potentially be mine um, it was actually the bronze wings owner that re reached out to me asking if I wanted to take it on or if I knew someone who would want to take it on and I offered her that we could try it out for a month see if they get along and if they did I could maybe take it on so that's what we're gonna do since I got a pie last week, I have some questions. Ask away, ask away. My Maxi loves being pet, but I can't pick him up. Obviously, I'm going to take take my time. Uh, was it straightforward with Charlie or did you have to teach her? So because Charlie was a baby, I would say it actually went pretty quickly. I didn't have to teach her. She just kind of did. But I mean, it's always a good idea to teach them, obviously treat them for it, associate it with something good from the start so that when they get older and realize that they can just not step up, um, it's a good idea to have trained it and know that, yeah, they, they see it as something positive. The worst thing you can do is force them to do it. By I, I've seen some people saying that you could uh, push your fingers towards their chest and they'll step up because else they'll fall. That's not the way to go around it. Uh, they should want to do it. You can also do, Oh, I think we actually did some target training with it. I asked her to target and step up on my fingers. And that way, Charlie got it pretty quick. And now she has no problem just step, stepping up when I offer my hand. It's really good. I can also, the body language, it sounds weird, but body language when you're holding a bird and telling it what to do is also pretty important. So for example, when I have Charlie like this and have my thumb over her toe, I'm telling Charlie that she can't fly anywhere. I don't want her to fly anywhere. And it also can tell her that if I want her to step up on something, she can now move one foot. She moves it to my hand and I let go. It, I don't think I can show it pretty well. I might make a video on that, but there's, there's a lot that goes into body language of telling your bird what you want it to do once it's on your hand. And you kind of get a feel for it whenever you have your bird. If I don't do anything, she will probably fly. Yeah, because... <laughs> oh no, she found the almonds! Because <laughs> I'm telling her that she can just fly if she wants to. Should we have gotten the box for those? Yeah, probably. Now she knows they're there. Can you wave, Charlie? Oh, good girl. She's so good. Could you do a video uh, on introducing a bird and what... Uh, they'll probably introduce one another. If that's all right, I would love to. And that's probably what it's going to be on. Um, I haven't obviously tried it before. I think it's going to be a lot of trial and error when introducing them. And I think it's very different what people do. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to go about it. I'm probably first going to introduce them in cages and then see what they say to just being next to each, next to each other. And then if, if that interaction is neutral, or they're not fighting or showing any aggression i might uh, either take one out of the cage or actually just allow them to have a lot of space so that they can fly away from each other if needed and then letting both of them out but it needs to be absolutely safe and i need to make sure that both of them aren't in any negative state of mind and want to attack the other or do anything to the other bird but it does help that they have seen each other before definitely so, but I'm gonna document the whole thing, so don't worry, don't worry. Uh, I have a bird room that I turned my basement into, uh, but I'm able to stay on the middle level with me. I also work from home, so I plan to have him near me. That's a great idea. And I love people that have bird rooms. I think it's such a cool idea. I would love to have one in the future 
where they can just have the whole room to themselves. It's a lot of space, a lot of flying space. That's also what Charlie has uh, at my mom's place when she takes care of her. She just has a whole room. I've decorated it with trees and all of that. So she has toys, she has perches. And that's also why I'm okay with leaving her there because I know she has plenty of space to fly around. Even more than she might have at our apartment. And my mom takes good care of her and it's also home. Um, so that's great. And I would maybe advise you to train then being home alone so that when you go out to do errands that your bird won't panic because all of a sudden you aren't there. I know a lot of people that have had baby birds or puppies during the epidemic and then they stay home all day. They all of a sudden have to leave and the pet just gets separation anxiety because now they suddenly Charlie's suddenly just, are alone. She's just, just absolutely mutilating a like almond. Pan, an almond yeah. on the, on the mouse I stole the rest so that she doesn't just eat, eat a whole bunch of almonds. But that would be some advice I would give. But great that they just have a whole room. What's Shelly's favorite treat? I think it's almonds or walnuts. What about bell peppers? I don't give them to her as a treat, but I probably should. Because Shelly would kill for bell pepper. She loves it. Whenever I make chop and the bell pepper comes out, she's done. She just comes over, wants to eat the whole bell pepper. And when I give her chop, she always salts out the bell pepper first and takes that. But I don't give them to her as a treat because it's just very unpractical to chop up bell pepper and have that in a treat pouch. But almonds and walnuts are probably Charlie's favorites. She does also enjoy sunflower seeds, but nuts are definitely better. That's exciting. You should really record it. I want to see how they react to each other. Me too. I'm really excited to see what they're going to say. And I'm also not gonna lie, when when I got a bird or wanted a pioneer, I did want a bronze wing. No offense, Charlie, close your ears. Charlie is amazing, don't get me wrong, but we all have that bird that we really want or, what you know, it? a favorite species. And to me, that was the bronze wing. So the, I'm super excited. The macaw. Oh yeah, highest in macaws are also very high up on my list, but that's probably more like if I had all the space and all the time in the world, I would get a hyacinth. But I'm not, I'm not at all ready for that. Try and put a macaw in a 30 square meter apartment. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> but I'm excited to see what Shelly thinks of her. It is another female, so there's not gonna be any breeding or, you know, hybrids <laughs> or anything. They are both female. Um, her name is Abba, and she is the same age as Charlie. She's three, maybe a bit older. So they're gonna be the same age, both girls. And it's Abba like the band, by the way, not like the bison in Last Airbender, though I would love to have a I'm bird named I'm Abba. Renaming her. I'm sorry. You're renaming her? All right. It's now not with two Bs, but two Ps. But no, she is missing a toe, actually, so she's a bit not handicapped. She's, she functions fine. It's more so a claw that she's missing than a, than a whole toe. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what she thinks of me as well. Of course, I'm excited to see what she thinks of me, not just Charlie. But I met her once. She's super sweet. She loves playing and just overall has a very good demeanor. Eh... Minus three year old, so it might take more time. He's really food motivated and it's a treat uh, in the palm of my hand, so he's slowly getting used to it. It's always nice when they're training motivated. It really gives a lot because I've, I think I've seen one bird or met one bird that was not training motivated and getting it to do anything was hard because you couldn't just get out treats and target train or you couldn't get out treats or get it to do anything. It just didn't care. So it makes everything harder. But I'm glad to hear that he is training motivated. It makes everything easier. And thank God. I think pies in general are pretty training motivated. I haven't heard of anyone who isn't. You're doing honey horns again. Can we have a shake? Shake. Oh, good girl, Charlie. Oh, yeah, definitely. Whoa. Uh, what's his favorite like toy? Wood paper? Uh, Charlie's is balsa wood. If you haven't seen, um, I got some Bertrix toys recently, sent from Bertrix, and they make 
balsa wood choice. It's a super soft wood type. So if it makes sense, Chelly likes wood that seems hard in texture, but she can break apart. So if it has like a bit harder surface, but still is easy to break, Charlie loves it. And even better if she can sit with it in her hand. So also small wood beads, um, yeah, wood beads, woods in general, Charlie loves it. She's not a big fan of harder wood types. So pine wood, for example, she is not a big fan of. She won't ever destroy it or get through it. Why is my nose so itchy? Pollen? Ah. I don't have pollen energy. You got those Blood jeans. Geeks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that must be rough. I'll leave from time to time for that reason. Great to know that you're training it at least. Blue had it my favorite ones, but it's more of a pain to get them in France because the, of uh, French Guyana. What's that? I haven't heard about that before. Maybe I'm stupid. I haven't heard about that before, but sucks if they're harder to get because of something in the country. <laughs> we got the corner during COVID, but thank you. I had uh, two other birds, so he was never alone. But yes, it took a lot for me to leave him because I was with him 24-7. Now he's bonded to my husband. Of course, it's always the men. You just like men, don't you? I mean, hopefully we don't want her getting a little, like lesbian panic if you get another bird can they can they lay eggs even though they aren't like you know yeah yeah having they babies yeah yeah they can just like chickens i haven't had any problem with charlie egg laying or anything when she's in horny season like she is now she maybe gets a bit more aggressive and bitey but she's usually good at telling that she hasn't always been recently but right now, when she's just shaking and doing horny honks, she's not in bitey mode. It's mostly at her cage, where she gets a little bit uh, tage, cage aggressive. Um, because obviously it's breeding season, so protecting her territory or her nest uh, becomes a high priority. And so she will bite out at people trying to intervene. Or I know at her food bowl, she's also very bitey and aggressive if we get near it. But right now, she's fine. She's sweet. It's hard to imagine, but whenever you get your bird, you kind of know their personality. And so I can tell right now that Charlie is not in biting mode. However, it's also easy to tell when she's in that mode. You're just horny now. Charlie, calm down. Can I get away? Oh, good girl, Charlie. She's been starting to doing this thing when I ask for a wave. She will take out her hand and then she will fold it. Like she's actually waving. It's so cute. I don't know if it's intentional, but she does it sometimes and it's super cute. And I'm trying to teach her to do that every time she waves. <laughs> oh. How many tricks does Shelly know? She knows she can do a spin. I don't know if she can do it right there because she's kind of sitting at an angle. Can you, can you if I hold her on my... Yeah, maybe. Like... Shelly, come on. Good girl, Shelly. Yeah. Can you do a spin? It's been a very, very slow spin, but she can do it. Good girl, Charlie. We can just have a little trick show. Oh, oh. Do a spin when she's done munching on that and spilling all over the place. We need to vacuum here anyway. <laughs> then she can wave, of course. Do it and fold. Yeah, she did it. Okay, almonds take a long time to eat. Maybe I didn't think through this before I wanted to do this. And then she can shake her head. She can come on command. And she can do a little uh, Sometimes she wants to do it. Sometimes she doesn't. And I don't know why I did it, but the command for that is raw. Um, and I have to bob my head. That's sort of the signal. Um, it, it's because she started to do it when she saw me. She did baby noises, and so I thought I would want to cue that as a command. So I started imitating her by bobbing my head, and now that's just the cue for it. Kelly, can you do raw? Ah. Oh, she's crawling up on you. Hello, she wants to go in this chair, probably. Hi, Kelly. Hello, can you do raw? Raw. Raw. 
This is the one she's least likely to do. Ra. Not shake it. Ra. You good? No? No. I would love for people who aren't bird people to just accidentally stumble upon this stream and then it's just to a me squirrel, roaring like, to my bird. <laughs> roaring at your bird. <laughs> Be like, <"Rawr." laughs> Don't mind me roaring at my bird. <laughs> Here you go, Charlie. You have this. The sun is setting. We're getting progressively more and more blue. I don't know if... <laughs> uh, uh, oh yeah, there was that. The Ganya and the French Ganya. We have lost to protect our overseas species and since blue-headed pirates fly over the place, we have to throw more duck meat to get them. Oh! Oh, that's actually great to know because I've been wanting to travel with Charlie and as far as I could see, it was pretty easy to get them through EU countries if we just had paperwork done and she was at the vet selling that she was fine and also having papers on that. Now it's just a spotlight. <laughs> but it's what actually spotlight? good to know which countries we maybe need extra documentation for. But it makes sense. Like, obviously these laws are there to protect the birds. That bit high music. Obviously, we're there, they're there to protect the species, so overall it's a good thing, right? But it does mean that it can get harder, which can of course suck a little bit. But nice to hear that you at least got your pie, if there are hard to get. Oh, going well, I see. It's gonna be great. A thing that I'm actually in doubt about is how I'm going to train two birds because I am a bit afraid that we have two dogs and I know that the one dog gets very jealous whenever we train with the other one and gets very desperate and would just do 10,000 tricks <laughs> at once. So I am a bit nervous about the training aspects of having two birds but seeing someone like uh, Ashley from Pinus Tales and obviously a whole lot of other YouTubers who have two birds just get along very well. Uh, I think it's gonna be okay, but seeing my two dogs being very protective and wanting the attention, I'm a, I'm a bit afraid of getting a second bird, fearing that they will get very possessive. Yeah, possessive and biting with each other whenever I get treats out. But I think birds are better at that than dogs. <laughs> Are we hearing a little bias here, or...? No, yeah, not at all, not at all, not at all. <laughs> it's not much hard to get them, but it makes hard to breed them. Oh, okay. So in that regard. But I mean, if it's harder to breed them, again, it's probably better to have it the law so that you don't have irresponsible breeders that are just breeding pies yeah. for money, especially when they're worth that much. It's a very lucrative business, and there are definitely people just exploiting it. Yeah, like, with every business, almost. I mean, yeah, true. But, I mean, it's always something else when you involve animals. True. But I think scammers and such are more, like, there are more of them in the US. I've heard a lot of people. I'm a member of, of the Pi group on Facebook, and I feel like I see a lot of people on that group getting scammed or seeing scammers when it's in the US. Um, we don't see them much here. Where do you buy Charlie's toys and purchase from? So most of her purchase are actually just from outside. I go outside, I found a branch um, and I clean it, I put hot water over it. Don't use anything else than hot water. Uh, I scrub them and then I put it inside her cage just hoping that it fits. And putting it in some weird angle where it will fit um, and because Charlie doesn't weigh that much and um, they don't go anywhere so that's actually most of her purchase but else I do go to um, like a pet store and get some of her purchase like the um, the leather one that I have in there is from a pet store and some of the other ones the platform perch the platform perch is actually for rodents so great tip if you are in a pet store actually try and go to the rodent section Charlie's toys that I do buy from pet stores, though they are not as great as Bertrix toys, they're from the rodent section of a pet store. So try and go over there. There's most likely 
more chewable toys than in the bird section. That way you can avoid plastic, mirrors, all of that. And if you then go to the rodents, there's a lot of branches and wood textures and stuff. And you can still hang them on the bars because at least here, most of them still do have that attachment thingy because rodent cages uh, might have that. So for rats, for example, uh, they will still need that attachment. So don't be afraid to go for like other pets toys whenever you're looking for bird toys. Because as long as it's chewable, natural, and can hang on the cage, it's fine. But I will say that Charlie loves Bertrix toys. That's her favorite and most likely the only ones I'm going to buy from now on. You know, they are a bit more expensive, but it's, it's the only thing that she really, really likes. I might be able to buy some toys from the pet store and she will maybe like them or buy the little bit in them. But the Bertrix toys, they're gone within hours. So that's a sign that she really likes them compared to these other ones, though they are a fine alternative, so. I mean, she's, you should be able to get, you know, uh, get some Bertrix toys when you're in uh, the US, maybe. Yeah, I'm going to the US tomorrow. <laughs> I, <laughs> and did you just I forget am. to mention that? Oh yeah, no. I'm also excited for that. It's gonna be great, though I have to leave my baby for a month. And my boyfriend, but you know. <laughs> Minor detail. Yeah. I'm gonna miss him as well. Uh, they're overloaded, so Bria's are looking at glass and blue fronted Amazons for profit. They're over, yeah, oh yeah, overlooked. Okay, I thought you said overloaded. <laughs> I was like, no. But yeah, definitely. I know a lot of people that don't know anything about pies. Whenever people ask what kind of bird it is, I've had so many people um, come up to me and it's like, is that a baby Amazon? No, it's not. But it gets bigger, right? So it's a baby Amazon. No, it's not. <laughs> she's totally wrong. So pe people think Charlie's a baby Amazon because she's green, obviously. And I think they are closer related to Amazons than any other species or genus, I should say. But... <laughs> but yeah, I can definitely see that people overlook them. Many people don't know what they are. Or what a pionis is. I feel like the most, the one people know the most is um, macaws and then maybe conures, cockatiels, maybe like oh, budgies and some other parakeets, cockatoos, but all of these other species, pionis, uh, quakers, myers, all of those. I think they are very overlooked. So I can imagine that if you want to make a profit, you would want to go for the more known species. <laughs> Definitely. Oh no, is she going for my keycaps? She might be. Charlie has changed career. She's now a gamer. Come here, little gamer girl. <laughs> you want to chill? She's going to play a video. Want to chill over here? She wants to go on, <laughs> on that one. Poop, Charlie, poop. She's right there. Don't bite the chair. <laughs> okay, there we go. Please, it's already <laughs> so much. Has she been loud recently? My two and a half year old has been uh, so loud this last month. Uh, I think I can only think it's hormones. It's definitely hormones. If she's two and a half, that's prime age for hormones kicking in. And next year and this year is probably going to be your worst year. Because they, um, the, yeah, that's when their hormones are worst, uh, just when they get into puberty. At two and a half and three and a half, it gets, it, it only gets better from there, let's say that. Or hopefully it can. I just had a long um, chat with Ashley over text asking for advice because Charlie was so loud. And I was beginning to think that it couldn't just be hormones. But turns out it could be. It could just be hormones. And that's why she's making a lot of noise. Because Charlie was three, just around three, yes she is now, when we moved in half, half a year ago. And that's just where the hormone season started. As well as we moved in, as well as we were living with my boyfriend. So it was so many things on top of her hormones. And everything was just a trigger for her. We, could, we couldn't turn on the sink. We couldn't go into another room. We couldn't have too loud of a conversation. We couldn't really do anything without Charlie screaming. It was horrible. 
I would say she's calmed down a bit now, but we are in the second phase of her hormones. They sort of have two stages here in the um, summer and spring. So during the spring, that's where they would mate in nature. So they're very hormonal, getting a partner, uh, laying eggs and all of that. And now we're getting to the second stage where the eggs would have hatched and they would now be protective over the nest and protecting their chicks, right? So we have especially noticed with Chally that her cage aggression is very bad right now, which is probably due to the second phase where she would be very nest uh, territorial. So it makes sense. But two and a half and three and a half is where it's worst. So it can only go up again from there. So we're hoping that next year Charlie's hormonal uh, phase will be more calm. Uh, I hope they get European distribution someday because the delivery fees hurts. Yep, <laughs> yep, they do. Uh, that's also why I haven't ordered many Bertrix toys. I assume that's what you're talking about because, gosh, their products are actually fair of price. I think it's fair. Um, it's not too expensive. It's what I would pay for that quality. Also knowing that I'm supporting Bertrix, it's great. But, oh my god, the transportation yeah, it's, fee it's and import fee, all of that. I'm, I'm paying at least three times the toy cost. So it's almost not worth for me. So when I'm going to the US, I plan on just buying a whole bunch of Bertrix toys. I have a lot of spare space in my, um, in my baggage. And so I'm going to fill it up with Bertrix toys so that I can bring them home for Jolly. But it sucks. It does. I really hope they also get European distribution. Could be cool. Uh, hello, Sayuri. I know you've been following for a long time, so it's great to see you on live stream. I hope it goes well with your uh, biology studies. I think it was. Hope you're doing well. But this saying, Yuri, Yuri uh, it goes up to 3.5. I thought I was safe since he turned 3. <laughs> nope, you're not. You're not. It can even go all the way up to 4. I can say that. Ashley, I know from Piona's Tales again. I always reference her because obviously she also has pies. She's the only other pie channel. So we talk a lot and she's great to talk to. Super sweet. And we talked a bit back and forth and Ashley has actually done a lot of research on pies. I obviously know a lot, but Ashley knows more, I would say. And Ashley said that it can go all the way up to five, um, that they are fully grown at the age of five, uh, most of them. Again, some can come earlier and some can come later, of course. But at five, they would be fully grown. But then, thankfully, they live for like, 35, 40 years. So it's those first five years that you really need to get through. And it's also why most birds that get rehomed are pretty young. And if if I go to the Danish marketplace or Danish Craigslist, it's probably can't sell pets at marketplace. But the Danish Craigslist, all the birds are zero to maybe three years old. Most are actually not even over two when they get rehomed. And it's because people People realize that they get into hormonal phase, they're not a baby anymore, and they need to rehome them because they scream in that. But trust me, if you can make it through those years, I think it's worth it, and they are absolutely amazing birds. People love their so. pets until they found out that what I brought a wild animal into my home and it needs care. Yeah. <laughs> it's wild. Do you maybe know if males and females reach maturity different or no idea? I don't think they do. I'm not, I mean, it, it's a 90%. I really don't think it matters, but I could be wrong. I haven't read it anywhere or know if anyone's saying that. So I wouldn't say they do. I think it's around the same. Yeah, only a few are 10 plus years, really a few. And I feel like those that get rid of them when they are 10 plus years, it's it really has to be something major that happens since they would give their parrot away. Or maybe it's even a parrot that's just been rehomed and rehomed and rehomed and now it's 10 years old. Which is such a shame because it does come with a lot of behavioral problems whenever they get rehomed and need to adjust to a new family and a new place and a new environment and all of that. So it's really sad. But 
yeah, that's unfortunately how it is today. <laughs> but that's why I know I made my channel and also why Ashley has hers and we have all of these people coming out and sharing their experiences. It's to hopefully prevent people from from rehoming their bird or at least showing them how to work with them or live a happier life with them, give them a better way of living. She's on your PC. <laughs> and and lastly, maybe even discourage from someone from getting a bird because I know a lot of people that impulse buy them, see a cute bird video, see a YouTuber they like have a bird and that they want to get one. Hopefully they can do the research, find some of our bird people's channel and then realize they are a lot more work than they look like. And then maybe get this courage from getting one. Hello, Charlie. Come down here. You're a bit flighty right now. Are you overstimulated? Do you want an almond? Do you want an almond? Can you do a wave? Close it. Oh, let's do a thing. Do a wave. Wave? We're gonna commit to do this. Same as with little kids. I don't I hope you don't mean the rehoming part, but Probably the five-year thing. Yeah, I know with kids you probably don't get a lot from them until they're that age So in the beginning you're just you're just making sure they have food entertaining them and they don't give a lot back until they reach a certain age and then I think when they start smiling and Giving feedback so to say it starts to become more worth it but you have to get through those first years of just taking care of an infant who can't really do anything themselves. So yeah, definitely. But don't rehome your kids, please. Please don't do that. To be honest, the older birds I've found had good looking feathers, so I remain somewhat hopeful. Oh, that's great, at least. I can't say the same for Danes, unfortunately. <laughs> the Danish bird community is something else. It's really something else. I think I'm one of the youngest people that have birds. Which, I'm pretty young, but I mean, the the other people that are in at least the bird forums and people I see, it's mostly older people that have birds here. Which also means that the knowledge that they have of birds is pretty outdated. So I know that a lot of people feed Aussie diets, they don't ever give their birds natural sunlight, uh, because they just stay inside in a tiny cage on a double perch with maybe a single toy. It's so sad to see. And... It's almost all of the people that I've seen post on the groups that have these very unhygienic places and bird poop overall, overall and I feel yeah. like a lot of Danish breeders are like that though. Like yeah. also with dog breeds and cat breeds, like the people we got our cat from, absolutely horrible homes. It smelled like smoke everywhere. Yeah, Danes aren't the best when it comes to research. Um, on animals unfortunately I feel like I mean there are exceptions and I know a lot of people who are great but unfortunately especially the parrot community here is not very it's not the best but nice to hear that there's hope and I do know that I, I've seen someone that's fine of course and that are great and give their parrots great life but yeah uh, whoa more room for birds. More room for birds. Indeed. They need more room. I, it, too often I see big macaws in the tiniest cages or at least cages where they can just be. And then there's a dowel. I thought it really bothers me or I don't have bothers, but, but it, what's the word for that? I can't speak English right now. It, it happens. Go on. <laughs> it's weird to me. I can say that. When I see people that have these big rooms for their birds or their, these huge aviaries and then they have like two perches. And it's like, why do you have this giant aviary that takes up half your living room to have two perches that go uh, horizontally through it? And then that's it. Uh, no toys, no other perches. And it's like, yeah, you have the space, but please, more toys, more perches, anything. <laughs> It's weird to me, oh, no. but at least they give the space, I so that's great. I am not able to color pick any of these colors, so I'm gonna have to eyeball the... Eyeball away. <laughs> Frida is drawing 
a picture someone sent in of them and their bird. And it's going pretty great. Oh, I'm excited. I'm so proud of this bird. <laughs> I'm excited for Shakira to see this. It's great. Um, even with my girl Simona, she's still such a great bird and has just so sweet. I don't know if that has anything to do with me getting her as a baby or it's just her temperament or just the finest thing. It could be all of the above, but great to hear that she's thriving. It's probably the biggest getaway that she's thriving. She's nice. She's not bitey. You're lucky. <laughs> but I mean, Charlie was also super sweet whenever I got her. Just a sweet little baby. And then all of a sudden it she's a menace. it all turned and she's a menace and screams and yeah. But it could be us moving, it could be hormones, could be anything. All I know is that it's going in the right direction where she's beginning to be more calm and used to people and all of that. So I'm grateful that it's going in the right direction. <laughs> but great to hear that they're fine. I It could be all of the above. Pies are known to be pretty chill. And they do have a very easy to read body language, which is also... A very good thing during hormonal period because Charlie is very good to tell me if she's in a bad mood and I should just stay away. I know with some birds it can be pretty hard to tell. Um, Ashley did a live stream where she talked about a uh, talk with um, uh, the parrot teacher who has conures and especially his crimson bellied conures were very hard to read in terms of body language. But pies are great in that manner. Um, very easy to read they puff up whenever they are they, it can be excitement but Charlie really does it whenever she's more aggressive so they're sort of fluff up their back feathers uh, in the neck and it's sort of like a cat Charlie's being horny again that's why he's shaking but it's sort of like a cat raising the hairs uh, on its back you can really tell and so just stay away or you're gonna get bitten and that's when you don't put your fingers in their face because they're gonna bite you but Right now she's fine. If she does a little, if she fluffs them up slowly, that means she wants scritches if I get my hand near her. But you will get to know that whenever you get a bird or have a bird. You know your bird's body language. It's so fun to see how they react individually to everything. If you clip a bird's wings, does so that mean they lose the ability of flight later? Mine has never flown and it's about one year now. Oh, I'm so sad to hear if he was clipped. Um, the thing with clipped birds is that they can still usually fly, but it just takes away their ability to steer, depending on how badly they were clipped. Some birds get clipped so bad that it just, you know, completely uh, disables them and makes them unable to fly, unfortunately. If they were clipped correctly, so to say, you should never do this, by the way, but if they were clipped correctly, um, they will lose their ability to steer. And so they can still fly, but when they try to, they can't steer, they fall down. And now the bird doesn't want to fly because it knows that it just can't go anywhere. It can't steer. So it's more so that they lose confidence to fly than their ability to. So the feathers will always grow out because the feather is a dead structure. And there will always be development of new feathers at their skin. So if you have a bird that's clipped, the feathers will be molted out. They molt uh, twice a year. They will be molted out, changed, and then a new feather will grow out. But then they still don't have that confidence to fly. So you, you will most likely need to build up their confidence. It could be via target training where they first jump from one place to another. And then they have to fly a little bit from one place to another. But slowly building up that confidence is what's going to be key. Because most birds will still be able to fly when clipped. And that's also why you should never bring a bird outside, even though it's clipped, because they can still fly. And their instincts will tell them to fly if they get scared, but they can't steer. So you just have a bird that flies and can't steer, maybe gets caught by the wind, and you might lose a bird. So don't clip them. It really messes up their confidence. <laughs> and birds are meant to fly. If you don't want a pet that can fly, don't get a bird. Because um, it's what they're made to do. Get a dog. Get a cat. Get a dog and a cat. A bird is like a dog and a cat that chews in all of your things, but they can fly. So, putting places on the ground is more safe than putting them on a high shelf. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't... I don't know how your bird is clipped, Nero, but I would 
try and see if it's too bad or anything and then try and build up his confidence definitely but it's actually a good thing maybe that he's only one years old because then he hasn't been clipped for that long so there's still time whereas birds that have been clipped over and over again for years and years and years might never want to fly because they haven't been able to for such a long time that they just don't see any use in doing it or trying good you're changing the bird world there the channel is super big but it's obviously so nice just chatting with people and having a small community i think it's so fun and i really love just sharing what i learned in vet school what i read what i've learned from having charlie it's super nice uh i thought denmark was pretty strict though isn't uh, hand feeding illegal for example uh no it's not not at all hand feeding uh hand feeding a bird i'm assuming for for people um denmark's animal laws aren't aren't that great i mean we don't have uh, pet stores like in the us where animals have terrible conditions and all of that in that regard it's fine because it's such a small country that people are just more aware of what's happening um at the stores and at chains and all of that so in that regard it's fine and i also know there was this horse case recently um where the whole country basically knows if a farm is mistreating horses and it, it's pretty easy to boycott those places because we aren't more people than we are so in that case it's great but in the case of private laws and all of that it's not the best you can breed dogs if you want you can breed birds if you want there aren't much regulation on that um it's of course good to have papers and i think you should uh, regarding some animals in some laws but i'm not sure on that charlie had papers and i know a lot of people would always just go for pets that have papers but it's obviously you can't they don't regulate it as well yeah, so we didn't get papers for our cat no a lot of a lot of people don't and yeah for example cats i know you don't have to get papers on those so in that regard it's not the best but in regards of someone getting a bad reputation a lot of people will know very quickly and boycott that please so and of course people like animals we're not heartless people <laughs> But they like animals, and we want the best for them, but law-wise, there isn't much we can do. And some people take advantage of that, unfortunately. And some people want a cheap bird or cat or dog or whatever and buy from those people. That's just how the world works. There will always be some people. Uh, would you personally recommend to get all the birds after the hormonal change? Uh, all bluffing base. Uh, I mean... Depends on what you're prepared for. If if you want a baby bird and you're prepared for that hormonal stage that's gonna come, or a younger bird, you can totally do it, and it can be really rewarding. And um, so, me having Charlie as a baby, I know baby bird behavior, or at least I have some insight to it. And now Charlie being in her hormonal phase, I get to know a lot of her body language regarding aggression, regarding hormonal things, regarding everything and know how she is in hormonal stages. And you know, I get the worst picture and then I can appreciate the good things more, if that makes sense. Um, but I know that Ashley's gonna do some video on hormonal behavior at some point. I don't think I have one going totally into it, only that it's going downhill here with Charlie's hormonal aggression and all of that. But you sort of get the worst, and that way you appreciate the good things whenever they get older, if that makes sense. So in that regard, it's fine, and you get the, the things. But some people can't handle that their bird starts to scream, or their bird starts to get more bitey and all of that. And you can get an older bird, and adoption is a beautiful thing. I think it's great to give birds a second chance. So of course, if you're up for it, if you don't want to deal with it, there can of course still be some behavioral problems or things to work on. But if you're not too keen on the whole, whole uh, hormonal phase at three years of age ish, again, some earlier, some later, you can get an older bird, definitely. I'm more for the younger ones so that I can sort of, 
sort of built my everyday around them. So Charlie is used to being all sorts of places. She's used to all sorts of people. And she even loves... Even the weird ones. <laughs> even the weird ones. Even Frida. So there's hope for everyone. <laughs> but... <laughs> But I have been able to shape Charlie since she was a baby, take her everywhere, bring her outside, um, bring her into rooms, get her on other people. And that's the benefit of having a baby bird, I would say. So that now that Charlie is an adult, she's totally fine with that. And it can be a bit harder to teach, teach adult birds to do that because they've been used to a certain living style uh, from the beginning. And so getting into new things can be a bit harder. But. And I'm so sorry, my nose is very itchy, and I don't know why. Uh, yeah, exactly. It would depend on your experience. I saw Vori answered you. But yeah, if, if as, as Vori says, if it's neglected or anything like that, you could have some other behavioral problems compared to if you get a bird younger, you sort of have the ability to shave it yourself. And if you have the experience and it's ready for the hormonal phase, Go for it. Go for it. I'm personally just for that whole shaping of personality thing. But some people like the other thing and I respect that. And obviously you can you can adopt the bird, which is great. I did have a bit a bit of a struggle, inner struggle with myself with buying a baby because obviously a lot of birds but it's important for me to say that pies are so rare that I don't think I think just like a lot of other countries they aren't that much up for adoption or at shelters so if I wanted a pie I had to go through a breeder <laughs> and I think it's so important to choose a bird that fits your lifestyle because if you don't there's a higher chance that you're just gonna rehome it down the line anyway so even if a lot of birds are for adoption, it could be a bird that doesn't fit my lifestyle. And so getting one would probably maybe think that I would have to rehome it later. I can't speak. Are you ready to go to bed maybe? It's over your bedtime. Shelly usually goes to bed by herself, but obviously we're out in the shed. So I don't know if you And it is hot in here. It's very hot. Charlie's going to bed. Say goodnight to Charlie. Good She's night, in Charlie. her in her bag now. Looking out. But I think Charlie's gonna go to bed. She can sleep everywhere again because she's conditioned to do so. And even with us talking and me staying up late at night, Charlie Charlie is very good at just going to sleep. And it's great. Teach your birds to do that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're thank just gonna you. open the door, get some fresh air. Yeah. These computers are radiators. Oh. Rui says hi, Charlie. <laughs> Good night, little Charlie. I'm used to dogs and cats. Yeah, I get that. It's much of the same. I. I actually think animal training in general is very much of the same, or animal mindsets, I guess you yeah, could even say. Yeah, people. Like, you even can, you babies. Can buy the same yeah, just like thing. the guy saying with babies and all that. You have to go through for things that's not fun in order to get to the fun stuff. Yeah, and, and I know I actually thing. have one video that Bertrix made where I disagreed. Um, <gasps> I know, shocking. <laughs> but they made a video saying why bird training is different to dog training. And had a guy in that trained canines um, and, and trained their bird and why his method didn't work on birds. I disagree. I think dog training is very much the same as um, bird training. Um, you're welcome, Sayuri. But I, the reason it's the same is because dogs and birds are very food motivated and Whenever you catch a behavior, you reward that behavior and they're more likely to repeat that. It's the exact same with every animal, almost. That's how, same that's me. the foundation. I'm motivated by food. <laughs> like you put an Oreo in front of me and you're like, Frida, do 10 push-ups. And I'll be like, hell yeah, I'm gonna do 10 push-ups. 
Well, maybe you're not going to get your dog to do push-ups, but, <laughs> but just any animal that's motivated by food, really. Just animal does behavior, they get treated. Animal will be more likely to repeat behavior because they're wired to hunt for food or get food in any way. And if doing a certain behavior gives them food, that's what they're going to do. And I think the guy Bertrix had in was a police canine guy. So his training method was with the uh, dogs was very like the dominance type of training. I don't quite agree with that kind of training at all. I think positive reinforcement is always the way to go with any animals. Just give them better motivation to do things. What I like to compare them to actually is imagine if your parents tell you to wash the dish, uh, take the dishes, right? They can do it two ways. Uh, they can say, do the dishes or we'll beat you up. You're probably going to do the dishes. But it's not because you get a reward at the end. It's because they're going to beat you up if you don't do it. So do the dishes or we'll beat you up. Or do the dishes and you can get some candy afterwards. Now, in which case are you going to do the dishes because you want to? Or because you want something at the end? It's probably going to be the candy one. And you're going to be less afraid of your parents. And, and you're gonna have the, <laughs> and you're just gonna overall have a better relationship with your parents that way instead of this i'm doing things for them because i'm afraid of them which is what i think this dominance training really just leads to rather than the positive reinforcement which would be the candy option you build a better relationship with your owner or your trainer and your dog or whatever the other way around and it's just better overall for everyone i always like to use that example i think it's great don't do things or don't ask your animal to do some things. And if they don't do it, punish them. But do the other thing the way around. Positive reinforcement. Uh, I kind of have to agree with Bertrix in the same that it's true that you ask a bird for permission. So the more so than with a dog. I can see that aspect of it. But I just think the way that they explained it was this dominance training doesn't work with a parrot. And obviously it doesn't. But I also don't really agree with that on dog training i would go for the positive reinforcement just as you would with a, par uh, a parrot i also think you should ask a dog for permission if that makes sense um some behaviors that they do need to be immediately corrected just like with horses and yeah dogs and that but yeah overall i think positive reinforcement with both is just better but i do get what you mean with the asking Food is always the key, yeah. It really is. We have to remember that they're still they're still animals, right? What are they wired to do? Survive. How do I survive? I get food. And if we are the source of food, they're gonna want to hang around with us. Because we, we hunt for them, we give them food and all that. And then, obviously with some animals, they get something out of the social interaction, just like with parrots. But I actually wanted to make a video on this. Now I'm just talking about it. But let's do it anyway, because I wanted to talk about actually uh, applying human emotions to animals. I think can be dangerous at some points. There's obviously nothing wrong with saying that your dog loves you or your parrot loves you or anything like that. It's fine. But I just saw a video of someone over petting their tortoise, having their hands all up in its face all the time like this, just having hands on its face, on its paws, everything. And then when the tortoise took its hand up to get the hand away, obviously, uh, the owner would say that it went up for a handshake and take its hand and do this and all that. And I think it can be dangerous to apply human emotions like that. It's worse with reptiles, obviously. But yeah, it, it can be done. And I'm going to make a video on that because I think I'm just rambling right now about something random because I'm having thoughts in my head. But I'm gonna make a video on that because I think it's an interesting discussion to have. Especially regarding exotic pets. Because obviously dogs and cats and such can get something out of social interaction. But not in the same way as a bearded dragon or tortoise or turtle or hamsters. Oh, hamsters. I'm, I could make a whole video talking about hamsters. <laughs> Poor fellas. Oh, poor guy. Yeah, they've just been doomed to being child's pet, and it's not fair. Hamsters are great. 
but yeah, maybe not the greatest pets. But yeah, how long are you with your drawing? I am. It looks almost some done. Finishing it looks great. Touches. I mean, I could finish it here, but. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Take your time. It needs I'm to be just, great. Uh, I'm just going to like do some finishing touches. Rodents in general, yeah. Hamster, yeah. Bunnies. Poor guys have just been doomed to being kids' animals, and it's so sad. And it's because they're small, they're cute, and they live for two years. My time working in a pet store, I can't tell you how many parents came in and just wanted a hamster because child wanted a pet and it only lives for two years. So let's get the smallest cage possible and all that. It's horrible. Also bunnies, so rough. Bunnies should be, yeah, free roamed. Hamster should have a giant tank. And then whenever I told parents that that's what they needed, I just got this very disappointed look because they don't want to spend like a hundred dollars on a hamster. They they just want the cheapest because their child wanted a pet. And the hamsters are like, they're nocturnal. They don't want, they're, they're uh, what's it called? They're solitary. They live alone. So they don't really want to interact that much. They more so just tolerate it rather than wanting the cuddles or pets and that. Um, and they're also, again, food motivated like every other animals. So it's just, they're not the greatest child's pet ever at all, actually. <laughs> Bunnies might be even worse, though it's not a con contest. Oh no, I hope it's not a contest. But yeah, bunnies, it's so horrible. That time I worked in the pet store, it was so horrible seeing the cute, cute bunnies that obviously came in from pet mills. Horrible to see those, but I mean, we were there, we could do the best we could. And I tried to tell so many parents about free roaming. I put up a sign, I told them the benefits, that it was actually easier in regards to cleaning, but most parents just aren't ready to give their child a rabbit that can free roam because they don't want to have a bunny that runs around, which is so weird to me because you're taking care of like a pet. I feel like it would be easier and kind it of more, is easier. and like a lot more cute too. Like with a cat, instead of having a cat in one spot, like you have your cat everywhere and it'll come and greet you. Same with the bunny, it'll you know run around. Sometimes it'll sometimes it'll come to you. It's so rewarding to have a free roaming rabbit, I think. And you could like it's not that you know you could have a cage as a base. You could have a pen as a base. It's not to say that they should be in the house always because obviously they are rodents they will bite in a lot of stuff and so a lot of people are not comfortable with leaving them in the house uh, because they're afraid they're gonna bite in something or get to something you can have them in an x pen and then when you get home let them out you're gonna get so much personality out of your rabbit instead of just having it in a cage in a kid's room and leave it up to the kids to feed them one more people that they're brunch free roam here once again i'm somewhat hopeful I am too, actually, especially with the bunnies. I've seen so many people uh, wanting to free roam and it's awesome. Um, it is mostly still parents buying cages for their bunnies. Anyone else uh, I know that buys bunnies, they buy free roaming ones and it's great. I think especially you're right with that, the bunny community. I don't feel like there have been, there've been processed in the other communities, like with hamsters, but not as much, actually, as far as I can see. Not as much. It may also just be us Danes again, or some of the Danes uh, that don't. But those darn Danes. Those darn Danes. But yeah, I think you're right in the bunny thing. A lot of people are getting their eyes open to what a free roaming bunny can give, and it's awesome. Ah. It's just easier with free roaming bunnies, actually. Less cleaning. I mean, we had a free roaming bunny for some time. It was yeah. this really cute bunny that Stella, like, I just came home one day back when we were still <laughs> living together. Uh, I just came home one day and Stella was like, Bria, I got a bunny. I can <laughs> feed him. <laughs> so there was this super cute bunny that we had at the store that I worked at. He was so curious, come up, sniff the hand, lick our hands. He was so, so cute. So what I did was that I bought the necessary supplies, a little box, a X pen and what I could and I brought him home and then I made sure that he got a good home. I know I should do that with all bunnies really 
I just couldn't leave this guy. He was so cute. I spent way too much time with him at, at work. And I kind of like ended up adopting him. I was planning on adopting him. His name was Darwin. He was adorable. <laughs> he ran around my room. Yeah. Chewed up my walls. Loved him. Yeah, it. he was cutie. But he got off to a great home. He, oh, he's yeah, a free roaming bunny now. So that's great. I couldn't leave the guy. Burp. Oh, it's my friend Casper. Hi, Casper. <laughs> is it Burb is sleeping right now. It's her bedtime. And thankfully she's trained to just be able to sleep even though we're talking and there's music and all of that. She's been sleeping at concerts. So I think she's good. Me too, honestly. Was that a mom and uh was that a mom and pop store or like a bit pet mall? Um it's it was like it was another store, but it had a pet store section with some animals. So we had, um, there were hamsters and fish. other rodents, fish, bunnies. We didn't have birds, thankfully. And no guinea pigs. Yeah, and then some reptiles. We had bearded dragons, turtles, tortoises. You didn't have snakes, did you? We oh, did have some snakes. Have snakes. And yeah. mice, right? Mice, rats, a lot of things. But I mean, it's not really... I'm not all for pet stores at all. I I kind of hate them. I don't think it should be a thing. It could be done ethically, right? But it's not at all realistic. They could get from shelters, help shelters out, and fill up the store with shelter pets and have some educated people to tell about them and sell the right stuff, right? But it's probably not realistic. But in that regard, it could be done correctly. Um, I'm not at all for it, but I just saw my time working at the pet store as an opportunity to actually be that one employee to tell the good stuff. So stuff like telling parents to free roam their rabbits or telling people that hamsters need needs uh, a big wheel and a lot of bedding and a lot of space and all of that for all the other animals. And it worked sometimes. And in that regard, it was really rewarding seeing some people uh, getting their eyes open to a free roaming bunny or or really just taking the time to research and you know spending the money to buy the right supplies it was great but there were also just those parents that would be oh, yeah. stubborn and not wanting to do anything other than what they came for get the small rabbit cage for their son or daughter and all of those things the guy with the you're gonna fish. take the good with the bad mm -hmm. but those people that were acceptive of the info it was great and I know that I could send some animals out to have a great life. So that was awesome. Sometimes it's much better than never. Yeah, exactly. And it could get really tired <laughs> telling people over and over and over and over again about these things. And I don't think my boss liked me that much because I kind of didn't sell oh, yeah, a you, lot of you our... were bad for business. Absolutely. I was so bad for bus business. I sent people to Ikea to get um, a hamster cage. I sent people all sorts of places. I sent them home. I sent them um, to maybe marketplace to find some better, bigger cages um, instead of selling a rabbit cage or a hamster cage. I don't think my boss liked me, but he never fired me. I quit, so yeah. Must have done something wrong, or, right? Yeah, I must have done something. I mean, people were happy, so. I did have someone tell me that they were happy that I told the truth. But also some people that were mad at me because I would tell them that it's not okay to keep a hamster in such a small cage. Obviously not in a rude manner, but still hinting just... towards it not being okay while their kid is standing right there and they don't want to spend more money. I got some angry customers, but you know. How dare you not lie to me so I can feel ethically okay yeah. with, with the bad stuff I'm doing? Like, exactly. what the hell? <laughs> exactly. That's really what they wanted, right? It's fine. I got over it. I got one guy screaming at me because we didn't want to take back his fish. Oh my god. So he filmed me. Yeah, that was... I had a Darren fun. moment. A Darren? Yeah. Is it a Darren? I thought I it was a Kent. Oh, it can be a Kent. He filmed me going out of the store because we didn't take back the fish he bought the day before. Because we don't do that because it's an animal that he bought. And we don't know if the fish is sick or anything. So we don't take animals back and he got very upset. Uh, said it was my fault that he had to go out and now kill this fish because they couldn't have it um, But he bought it. He had it for a day and we can't just take it back. It's 
yeah, that wasn't okay by him. <laughs> uh. But it was so yeah. weird, because what did I'm jobbing in a really good pet shop in Berlin. The laws are quite strict here, and the shopping, uh, shop owners are very responsible. Most of the staff there uh, to take care of the animals. That's so great to hear. That's amazing. That's amazing. I wish we had. I don't think we have a single pet store here where I'm like, that's amazing. I mean, the, <laughs> the shelter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, shelters. They have a little store, but it's not, it's not a lot of products that they sell. But the ones, I mean, if you can buy from there, that's great. But it's awesome to hear that there are at least some stores out there that are awesome. And it's also why I don't want to put everyone in a box saying pet stores are bad or pet store employees don't know anything. Because <laughs> I've been there myself with people not wanting to listen because they've heard that pet store employees lie. So when I say they need to buy a bigger hamster cage, they think I want to sell them that bigger hamster cage because it's more expensive rather than it actually being big enough for the hamster. And it's... It's annoying when they take the information that much to heart, whereas all employees are just bad, and all pet stores are just bad. But it's nice to hear there are some out there. It's great. Uh, if you inform someone about the, how to correctly take care of an animal, those people also tend to spend more on their pets since it's uh, part of the family. Indeed. Indeed. And I could feel that. Definitely. But someone i mean i could tell them something and it would maybe mean that they would spend more money so they don't want to because then then i just wanted to sell them more which was not the case at all i wanted them to get some better stuff <laughs> quite on the contrary you would actually like them to get as far away from that store as possible yeah i also was shocked at how many people wanted a second hamster people coming in with maybe two kids and wanting two hamsters for one cage or uh, having a hamster and seeing it as being lonely and therefore wanting another one. That was probably one I'm, I was most surprised by, people wanting a second hamster. And also the amount of people that didn't want a second bunny. So, yeah, it's it's a weird place, the pet store. Especially to work in. It's a weird work environment as one that actually loves pets. I mean, especially pets. because it wasn't primarily a bird place or like a, or a pet place. like. All the, all the animals there were kind of there as like a second priority because it was kind of also like a plant center. Yeah, it was a plant plant a center pet store. store. So like, yeah, and so we just had the pet section and we didn't make the most money, the plant center did. But I don't think we have... We do have one of the actually chain, chain pet store that is only pets, but those have worse condition than in the animal plant center. So that's just a bad place in Strange, general. You know. Yeah. Don't <laughs> I don't buy anything from there. Is it the one that's like very close? We have a bit of everything in France. Some shops are really good, others are meh. Yeah, it's the same here. Only though we have two. <laughs> we have two. The one is good and the other ones are meh. We don't have anything here. <laughs> but it also depends because this is a chain, there's actually even or even though it's a chain, there's actually a big difference in what center you're in. So they have some stalls around the country and some are way better than others. There are some where I think the animals have way too little space and ones where I think the animals have so much space that it's great. So it's difficult to tell which ones are good and to just boycott the whole thing in general. But the new one good. Uh, the new one they built? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Oh, okay. The tortoises have like five Oh yeah, that was right. The tortoises were like five square dude, meters, they, they and they're like not they're not house. bigger than this right now. And they have like five square meters. Yeah, is that a lot? Is that what I'm thinking? Is that the correct word? Five square meter. Yes. Yeah, I think like so. five by five, right? Yeah, five by five meters. Yeah, five by five. Meters. They have like five by five meters, and they're this big. It was great to see. And then in some of the other stores, they have like ten by ten centimeters, <laughs> and are this big. It's horrible. So, yeah, it's a shame that they're not prioritizing the animals the higher. People were coming for plants, but end up looking for pets that are not the best, in my opinion, and you're not going to meet the best customers. No, not at all. And you're absolutely right. A lot of people did that. Come in, look at plants, and then see a, a cute bunny wants a bunny. And now they haven't done any research and are just buying it because it's super cute. It was not a good com combination at all. I was also surprised at how many parents would just be like, 
mom and dad are going to look at plants and furniture. You kids can go down and play in the pet section. It was so bad. I have, I would say I have like half uh, a degree in taking care of children because of how many children I've told off to not knock on the glass, not to scream, not to do all these things. So if you're a parent watching, uh, please don't just send your children into pet stores to play. <laughs> I beg you. I feel like that should be obvious information, <laughs> but mm, maybe not. Yeah. I mean, some kids were actually great. Or some parents walking with their kids quietly. But holy, there was a lot of kids just screaming, running around, knocking on the glass. Especially at the fish, because they move when you knock on the glass. But it's not because they are happy or anything. They get scared. So don't do that. Same with all the pets. All the animals, actually. So don't. But there's a lot of funny stories from that pet store. You should, it do, was, a, you it should was do a video fun. on that. I would watch it. Yeah. I mean, it was fun in some regard. And then it's mostly looking back on it and thinking about some moments that makes it fun. Being in it, it's not the funniest thing ever. Because you're obviously setting pets that's not coming from a good place. And you have to sort of justify it by giving the right information to people. But when someone confronts you with it and you have to be honest and say they come from this place, it's not the best, da 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 It gets a bit annoying and, and you know, mentally hard to be in that space and talk to people about that. Do you ever think about getting another bird? I do. I do, I do, I do. Right now the space is the problem though. We have 30 square meters, um, so it's not a lot and having a second cage would be pretty hard. But if you weren't here in the start, I have a little surprise in August and I've talked about it, but I'm uh, getting, or not getting, but there's uh, a I'm brawn getting. swing coming on a sort of test in the month of August. I'm going to document the whole thing, but uh, one of my friends reached out asking if I would take her brawn swing and I agreed that I could try uh, or do a trial month, see what she and Charlie would think of each other, if it could be a match. I'm not expecting them to preen uh, by the first hours or the first week or anything like that. But tolerating each other, being interested in each other's body language, all of that, I could consider it uh, and figure out something with space. Because they have met before where there weren't too many problems or anything. They were just interested in each other. So we're going to try a whole month. If it doesn't work out, she does have a plan B and will take care of the rehoming. She's very responsible. But if not, and if they actually get along, I might get a bronze wing. Perhaps. Dream come true. Perhaps. A little girlfriend for Charlie. <laughs> we have the exact same types of chains here. I don't want to swim. I'm mixing pets and plants or a thing. It's not the same commitment. Thankfully, they can still sell less and less species. Yeah. It's such a dumb combination. I mean, some plants would be fine. Like, you could have... Uh, maybe a pet store with a couple of live plants because obviously it's great for terrariums and such but having that big of a plant section and then just a teeny tiny small pet section where people can get tended and impulsed by a pet it's so dumb it's so dumb it's so obvious that it's like so much just for the money and they just like it feels like they just don't care yeah i mean the employees working there often care you wouldn't apply to working at a pet store if you don't care for pets i feel like some would of course but majority i feel like would do it because they like pets and our store at least the one i worked at my boss was very sweet in just letting me do my thing he wasn't gonna you know listen in on everything i told the customers i could recommend whatever i thought was good for the animals he wouldn't come after me. He wouldn't cut my salary. Oh yeah, I, I feel like or it anything could like much that. Worse. It could be much much worse. He would just let me do my thing, and he know that I knew a lot about animals, and to them that was, you know, higher valued than selling things. Thankfully, I know someone aren't like that, but we had we were two. There were two zookeepers, educated zookeepers, so they also gave the right information. Um, then there was me and the young people that came into work, we would also educate in proper animal care so that they could give that to the customers. Also because we don't want to misguide customers and then they coming back and leaving bad reviews and saying that it's awful and we give awful advice and all of that. 
even though despite us giving the right advice, some people would just not do their own research, do something wrong, and then blame us. It's a jungle. It it's a jungle. So. But thankfully. Thankfully. A Dane! Thank you so much. And I love Nero. Or Neil. For a name. And have a great night to you as well. Well then, I Thank you for tuning in. We. I even saw macaws finished. growing up. Even in the macaws in pet stores? I've heard about pet stores having like a single macaw. I think they're done. I I'm am just, done. I'm just gonna answer these. Oh, no, 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 I've no seen pet no stores have macaws. We had one. Yeah, you have As one. like, but it, she wasn't for sale. She was just standing there though. Even in a big aviary and with purchase and toys, it was still not the greatest condition. And I could see her plucking some parrots and such. But okay. we did what we could. Yeah, parrots okay. pulling their feathers out. It, like in like a bad way. Yeah, they're because stressed. they're stressed. Or oh, bored. so they're kind of pulling out your hair. Yeah. Exactly. That's nice. It's not a good thing. Do you want me to send it to you? And then we can like, you know, put it on the screen or? Yeah, send it to me. Then I can put it on the screen. And it's probably easier know. for people to see. So Shakira, your drawing is done. And it's very cute. I, I hope I did okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna reply on the email that you sent and then you get a digital copy of that. And Make sure to follow Frida. Obviously, she's doing this free of charge. It's super sweet of her. So make sure to go in. Her name is her name is Gillard on um, Instagram. I'm gonna write it in the description for anyone watching this later. Um, but G E H uh, L E R T, Gillard. Oh, actually, it's A R T. Oh, did I, what did I say? E R T. Oh. That's, I, well, that's, how, that's how you spell our name. But... Oh yeah. You know, I changed it because it's a pun. Because it's art. Because it's art. It's art, baby. Do you have Instagram? I do. There's one picture, but I've been wanting to post more. So, you know what? From this day on, I will maybe try and post more to my Instagram. So, if you want to follow it, it's Stella and Charlie. Or is it Stella? Stello. I'm just going to check. Because Stello is my mid uh, nickname. So, I sometimes use that. Your middle name. Yeah. Your name is Stello Stello. Yeah. But I am planning on changing the channel name actually because Stella and Charlie I don't know if any of you have tried searching on it but there comes up like an old series called Stella and Charlie so I'm gonna change it up at some point I just haven't found the perfect name yet it's hard it's very hard it's Stella and Charlie on Instagram yeah. and there's a single pic of Charlie on my knee <laughs> but I'm well, gonna I, the problem was that there's a your nickname is Stella yeah it's also the name of like an already pretty popular YouTuber. So. Not, yeah, but a, a YouTuber with a lot of subs, so I didn't want to just like... Yoink. <laughs> take it. Uh, where am I going with this? You... Where did messenger. you send it? Oh no, messenger. Yeah, I know. It downscales the picture a bit, so... Can you send it on email? I can send it to you on email. I'm gonna send it to you on email. <laughs> send it to me an email. My calls in plants and pet shops. Great, not. <laughs> but those days are long gone. You need to take an exam if you want uh, a macaw now, and I don't think we can sell them like that anymore. Okay, that's also nice to hear. I have given it a very. I nice need to look up the laws in France regarding pets. They sound better than here, I actually. <laughs> I think. Oh, should I have sent it to your other email? No, it doesn't matter what email you sent it to. I'm gonna find it. What email did you send it to? Don't say it out loud. It's here. Oh, it's so I love the bird. Cute. The the face is questionable. Not your face. Your face is beautiful. I just. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm gonna save it here. Uh, art for Shakira. Waka, waka, oh, yeah. She's probably never heard that before, Frida. No, never. I could. I could not imagine. Oh, wait, it's Shakira. I read with. I. I am so sorry, Shakira. But for those that want to see it, I'm just gonna pull it up if I can. Yeah. So the final art. You can see it here. I am very nervous. Here it is. 
It's so cute. Frida just drew this in like the span of almost a little under two hours. Like an hour and a half? An hour and a half. That's impressive. So we have some art that I'm gonna send to Shakira. And I'm just gonna reply to the mail that you sent and you're gonna get it. But it's super cute, Frida. Gilard on Instagram and TikTok, maybe? And TikTok. I and actually TikTok. post more on TikTok, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Wow, Frida. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it's a Instagram and TikTok. Yeah. You can go follow Frida. She makes super cool things. And maybe she's gonna join us for another live stream and do something Thank similar. You. And subscribe to Stella. <laughs> she makes good content. And follow her on Instagram. She's gonna post. She promised that. I promised, didn't I? You, you did. You signed a contract. <laughs> well, I'm gonna close this again and I'm gonna send it to Shakira. So. I'm sure you don't have pollen allergy. I don't know. My my nose is just it's so like, unfortunately itchy. i felt that yeah it do be like that it's unfortunately you know it's the, it's the media that's the most popular right now so you kind of have to but uh, but yeah not the biggest fan of the app myself i, I have to be honest there we go I should have sent it to you now so that you can have it maybe printed out. <laughs> I unfortunately can't send it. Oh, thank you so much, Sayori. <laughs> Videos are more hardest. Kinda, yeah. At least I don't like them. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, it's also kind of hard because you know you do still it. pictures, so it's like, how am I gonna make that exciting? <laughs> like you have a bird flying around, I have a flat piece of paper that that I need to make interesting. <laughs> you could do some animation things, maybe. Animation is hard. I went to school for animation and then I dropped out. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't have such a great teacher, did you? Oh no, I had animation, uh, animation teacher. But you're I'm to... glad, glad you love it, Shakira. Oh, I, ho I hope it looks like you. I, of course, I only have one reference picture, so it's a little bit hard. So, I, I hope I got things right. <laughs> so, I think we might just end the stream now. We have both our boyfriends here, and we've just been sitting out here oh. for an hour and a half. Yeah, I've been. We've, I threw my boyfriend <laughs> out of our like, like common office. We took his computer. Stole his computer. It was like, get out of here. <laughs> we took his computer. We took their space, made them spend time together. Ew. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching and joining us here in the stream. I'm actually impressed we have 67 viewers right now. So thank you so we much. 67 viewers? Yeah. What the? F I can't say that. I think so. Oh no, it's, 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 it's just views. views. Okay. It's eight viewers, but then ah. it's like 67 like different people. Yeah, that's people. great. I'm still proud. Thank you so guys so much for just joining and checking in and whatnot. Absolutely. I'm obviously gonna upload this to the channel so that people can just watch it if they want to have something going in the background. But thank you so guys so much. We're gonna end it here and say goodbye. I hope you love the art, Shakira. <laughs> Keep an eye out for maybe some other live streams that we can do where Fruity can do some more art now that you know what she can do. So <laughs> I hope I set a good example. If not, I have more examples on my socials. <laughs> Go follow Frida. Uh, I'll leave everything down there. It's so sweet of her to do all of this for free. So good night, everyone. Probably if you're in the US, have a nice afternoon. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, time zones exist? And I don't know what time it is in Australia or anything like that. But good morning, good evening, goodbye. Have a nice everything. <laughs> I can I can be educated in French laws next time. Yeah, that could be great. Oh, I can read up on it next time and we can discuss it. Bye everyone. Thank you so much.